Hi, Robert Lustig finally is going vegan. This is Robert Lustig back in 2009 making a very popular video about sugar. That video name was Sugar the Bitter Truth. So, there is a graph that clearly says carbohydrate intake. There, the graph is telling that the rising of carbohydrate carbohydrate consumption is due to the consumption of soft drinks and fruit drinks. And here lies the problem with this. According to the medical literature, carbohydrate and sugar are the same thing. Glucose is the simplest form of carbohydrate. But when we vegans talk about carbohydrate, we mean complex carbohydrates, chains of glucose. Where do we find chains of glucose? in starchy foods like rice, potatoes, sweet potatoes, oats. There are some starches that have a minimum amount of fructose, like carrots, sweet potatoes, and corn. The rest of starches has almost non-existent fructose. And I'm telling you about fructose because we're gonna talk about fructose a lot in this video. Well, the rest of the viral video from 2009 is about fructose and the negative effect on human health. Robert Lustig made a great job by demonizing fructose. Remember this, sugar is made out of fructose and glucose, 50% of each one of those. Consider this, fruits has sugar, so fruits has some fructose. So, that video from 2009 went viral and it was the weapon of choice of many low carvers until today. Because there is a new video from Robert Lustig. So, let's see what has to say Robolastic and Dr. Orsman six years after that viral video. When they took the fat out, they had to do something because when you take the fat out, the food tastes like cardboard. They added salt and they added sugar. Yes, Robert, when the FDA says that we have to cut our consumption of fat, everyone does it. Not only that, they cut a cut out fat and increase the level of sugar because you cannot replace fat with anything else but sugar. I have asked Ollie and Luis to come and see me in clinic. They have no obvious indicators of a high sugar diet apart from some extra weight. But I have had MRI scans done which show they both carry fat around their abdominal organs. This is the other protagonist of this film, Dr. Eva Orsma. Who? Well, I don't know, but according to her, sugar is responsible for both fat tissue and high levels of cholesterol because she's a scientist. Ollie's cholesterol is 6.8 when it should be under 5. What? I don't know what kind of measurement of cholesterol is that, but when you measure cholesterol, you have to discriminate between HDL and LDL cholesterol. Why? Because HDL cholesterol is considered a good cholesterol made by ourselves, and LDL cholesterol is considered a bad cholesterol that increases when you eat animal foods, like eggs, or meat, or dairy products. So, Oli, let's have a look at now how much free sugar you are having a day. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. <laughs> This is what happens when you want to make an hour documentary and you don't have enough content to show. So we are going to try to help you over the next 30 days to meet the World Health Organization guidelines. Good luck! Good luck indeed! You didn't tell them what the hell did are they should, supposed to eat? What a lousy doctor are you? No wait! They hire a very competent nutritionist to help them out. I've advised a lot of people on how to reduce their sugar intake and people are often surprised to learn that it's not always about big sacrifices. Sometimes making small swaps can make a big difference. So for example, you know, it may seem obvious, let's say, to choose a reduced sugar baked beans over the regular type. How about going to the whole food section in the supermarket? You know where the fruits, vegetables, legumes and starch foods are. No? Then you're a lousy nutritionist too. Now, let's go back to fructose. When you eat common sugar or sucrose, it is broken down in your small intestine into two molecules called fructose and glucose. 
Meanwhile, fructose goes to your liver where it can be metabolized into energy. Now, Dr. Arsman, fructose in the liver is not metabolized into energy. It is transformed into higher energy particles like glucose, 50%, glycogen, 17%, lactate, 25%. And the, re and the rest of it is transformed into fatty acids via the novel lipogenesis. You can't metabolize matter into energy because our liver is not a nuclear reactor. You can transform fructose into high energy particles that our body can use as energy source. You're welcome. But the liver has a limited capacity to be able to metabolize it. It has an upper limit. And so if you consume over that limit, what happens is that the liver can't process all that energy and it has no choice but to turn the excess into liver fat. Yes, I agree with that. I agree that if you eat too much sugar, you can have troubles in your liver. And there are many studies that support this. And those limits that you're talking about, doctor, yes, yes, they are something real. Sugar meets all of the same criteria as alcohol. Do you know what consistency is, Robert? We were just talking about fructose. Would you please stick to fructose? Now you're talking that sugar is just like alcohol. Come on, man. That's bullshit. You know it. Type 2 diabetes happens when the pancreas can no longer make sufficient insulin or the body can't respond to insulin normally. And the body can't respond to insulin normally because sugar? We can agree that high amounts of sugar are not good, but you're not telling us the whole picture. Insulin resistance is caused by the intake of animal fat and some vegetable oils. This is Dr. Neil Barmer. He can elaborate a little bit more about this. this. What's supposed to happen is the glucose is supposed to enter into the cell, and glucose is the key that makes that happen. But the reason it doesn't happen is, is fat. Fat, little globules of fat. So we want to call it <laughs> intramyocellular lipid. Um, intramyocellular lipid is fat inside your muscle cells, and that is what interferes with insulin's ability to work like a key to signal glucose coming in. What about heart disease? Is sugar responsible too for that? So even if you are not overweight, a high sugar diet causing high blood glucose and high blood pressure damages your heart. The arteries connected to your heart become narrow or hardened. This restricts oxygen. Damaged blood vessels are vulnerable to clots which can cause a heart attack or a stroke. My God. Do I really have to prove at this point that cholesterol and saturated fat are responsible for narrowing and clogging arteries? I'm getting tired of this. Let's see the effects of the sugar on the brain, shall we? Inconsistent blood sugar levels in the brain affect different areas, such as the prefrontal cortex, where you can get problems with your ability to think. Damage to a part of the brain called the hippocampus, where your long-term memories are stored, can effectively erase the very essence of you. What do you mean with inconsistent levels of sugar in the brain? The brain works almost solely on glucose. In the other hand, there's plenty of evidence that cholesterol is responsible for Alzheimer's disease. So, how did it went for the Ryans? So, Oli, you were taking 22 teaspoons a day in added sugars, and you cut them down to one, oh, no, two, no, no, no. three, four, Five, five teaspoons. Oli, your cholesterol level 30 days ago was 6.8, and now your total cholesterol has dropped down to 5.2. Brilliant. Good. Yeah, that's good. Very impressive change. The proof is in the pudding. Oli's cholesterol came way down, our visceral fats came way down just by reducing our sugar. So, therefore, it seems to me that sugar must be some kind of a substance that's having a negative impact on our health in our system. I don't think that the, that decrease on total cholesterol has anything to do with fasting sugar. It must be something else. <laughs> Thank you. 
Luis and Oli have worked hard to change the eating habits of the children. Really? Fruit is now the standard snack. And full up, full up. We cut out the junk. So we cut out biscuits, we cut out sweets, we cut out ice cream. So you admit that fruits are good? Yes, fruits are good. Bravo, yes, thank you, thank you. So tell me, what do you have there in your lunchbox? I have carrot sticks, banana, apple and a slice of brown bread. Very good, and you have no sweets there? No. Very good indeed. That is vegan. Now, if you watch this entire doc uh, documentary, you will notice that they don't even mention meat, dairy, eggs, chicken as healthy foods at all. Neither do mention vegan, paleo, keto, low-fat, high-fat, low-carb, high-carb. Not even once they didn't mention these words. But I can make my own deductions from this. Fructose is not that good, right? But glucose is good. Fructose is not good, but fruits are good. Fruits has fructose and glucose. So glucose must be good. If glucose is good, starches are good. Why? Because they have glucose. So complex carbohydrates are good too. The overall message is quit processed and sugar foods with fat. Eat more fruits, vegetables, starches, and go vegan. Yes! Thank you, Robert. Six more years and you're gonna be right on your on our side. Until the next video.